Hello my friends. Asked by a pupil recently if it is possible to play without pain on the violin. Um, I gave her a few hints and tips and we sorted out her stance and the balance of her instrument and I thought I'd share a few of those ideas with you because uh, maybe they will benefit other people as well. Now um, having your violin um, properly measured and set up uh, to suit your individual body is, is a very individual thing. Uh, so the guidelines that I'm going to give you are just general guidelines, but nevertheless, some ideas might come in useful for you as well. When we talk about pain-free violin playing, I am talking about as playing with as little muscle tension as possible. And having a balanced violin hold starts with your feet. Um, so you might practice in your socks for a while so that you start to experience the floor under your, the soles of your feet. Um, a little bit more and that helps for most people that helps quite a lot it's a remarkable difference that people sometimes feel um, but what you want to try and do is to have a balanced stance and I like to stand with my left foot forward a little bit because my violin is on my left side of my body I would like a bit more support here so I step forward slightly with my left foot so that I can have this rocking motion going forwards and backwards and that will help most people quite a lot already uh, if you stop swaying from left to right when you play like that which is much more encouraged when your feet are next to one another um, and instead go and opt for a forwards to backwards uh, balance I'm not saying that you have to uh, rock forwards and backwards excessively when you play but an athletic stance um, that has your knees free and a good feel a balanced feel on the floor with your feet makes all the difference to good violin playing then how do i set up a violin hold is um, you can have various different ways and i really like this way if you have this button here at the end of your violin stick that in that little um, space there in your neck and now slide your violin alongside your collarbone to the left side so that is quite near your earlobe here um, what many people do is they have their chin rest um, under their chin and that uh, causes a lot of problems for many people so what I'm doing is I'm having my violin much higher up on the side and it's literally on my collarbone and my jaw is on the chin rest this part of my jaw this corner here rather than the chin the chin is actually not at all on my chin rest at all that varies from person to person but as a general guide I would say Try to avoid getting your chin on a chin rest. Instead, start calling that thing a jaw rest and it is much more appropriate. Okay, now if you rest your violin on your collarbone and then have it uh, near your ear, for most people, you're actually left with a bit of a space here. And in my view, and there's lots of discussion about this, but for, this works for the vast majority of people, I would say, if you fill up this space that you've got left over, um, that will make for a much better balanced violin. Now, filling up that gap can be done in two ways. You could put a shoulder rest under it, which is what I do. And then you fill up that gap more or less. You see, I haven't got as much space now that I have than I had before. You can also get extensions to um, your chin rest and lever that up a little bit and people with very long necks might opt for both, have a shoulder rest underneath and then raise your chin rest a little bit so that you fill up that gap. And that then creates a balance so that you can hold your violin and it is a balance. I'm not actually squeezing that very hard. I can hold it quite loosely and you can see when I talk, there is movement in my violin. It's not stuck there forever, but it's, it's balanced on my collarbone and I'm holding it with my chin I'm also sometimes holding it with my left hand a little bit. But because I can hold it with my chin, I don't have to squeeze my thumb to hold the violin up. And neither do I have to squeeze here the first base knuckle of my hand to hold the violin up because the violin is held up basically by the balance between my neck and my hand. And sometimes when my hand gets tired, my neck takes over a bit more strongly. And when my neck gets tired, my hand takes over a little bit more. Also, when I change positions, um, I haven't got either. I haven't got any pressure on that base knuckle here or on my thumb because that's, that 
just reaches across and pushes the violin into my neck, which creates another type of balance. Okay, so what you might do, if you feel that filling up that gap is helpful, you can start to feel that balance. Okay, and that then opens up much more space for your arms to move. And you can try this exercise here. Lots of Suzuki people will be able to do that as well. And it indicates a good balance um, for your violin. And once you've got that balance, it frees up your hands for playing. Look, I don't have to hold it. I can use my hands for bowing and for playing. Now, if I am much more free in my left hand to move, and I can move positions much more easily when I'm just holding the violin between my collarbone and my jaw, um, then I can play with a lot less pressure on my fingers. So I don't need to really press my fingers harder into the string then to stop the string because that is simply a waste of your energy. It's not going to enhance the sound if you press any harder on your fingers than that. But not only that, if your fingers are lighter on the strings and you are able to move more, that automatically sinks your right arm as well and you're much more free to move the bow. And you've got a very big circle for the bow to move. So you could actually make the bow much straighter and, and move it more forward. So if you have difficulty in your neck, upper, sh your shoulders or upper back, uh, then you might try any one of these ideas and try to find the balance rather than squeezing the violin too hard. You can also see when I'm balancing my violin, my left elbow can be much more free and because I can move it, it then gets much less stiff and then creates much less tension. I hope that's helped. Do subscribe to the channel if you can and um, give us some comments, it would be, that would be good. Good to see you. Any more advice you can find on the Pro Arm Strings website.